please welcome Kent Stock. I am so excited to be here tonight. I, first of all, Lydia, thank you very much for sharing your story. It's an amazing story. You are, uh, you are a mentor to a lot of people. Chris, thank you for having me come out tonight again. Uh, we, great story how Chris and I met. Uh, I tell a story about how I became the Norway head baseball coach is that it was by chance. I walked into a high school gymnasium scouting a volleyball match. I had a passion. Baseball is my passion. But when I got offered my first job as a teacher, they said, would you be our junior high girls volleyball coach? Oh, man, was that cry? I was crushed. But I wanted to be a baseball coach. But it was volleyball. And I went to scout a match one night. And I walked up in the bleachers, and I saw a man sitting in the corner. And that man's name was Jim Vanskoy, legendary Hall of Fame baseball coach who I knew about, town of 586 people that had won 18 state baseball championships. I sat probably from here to Chris away from Coach Vanskoy that night in that gym, and I started inching closer and closer to Coach Vanskoy. He probably, probably thought I was stalking him or something. But with a churning stomach and sweaty hands, I finally reached out and introduced myself. I said, Coach Vanskoy, I'm Kent Stock from Bell Plain. Well, from there, to make a long story short, I met him, we talked, and I ended up becoming his assistant baseball coach. That was Chris, years later, with me. I was sitting in my office in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I work at Community Savings Bank, and, and as I do PR and business development. And that day, I, wasn't, I was sitting at my desk, and I get a Facebook message from a guy by the name of Ken Rader. Ken Rader was a kid that I went to high school with, played baseball in middle school, you know, junior high, high school with. And he said, Kent, have you ever heard of Chris Norton? I said, absolutely. I said, I'd love to meet him. Well, he wants to meet you too. Met him through uh, Jason and Gary, who knew Chris, and they knew Ken, and they made that connection with us, and the rest is history. You know, we've been together hanging out for, for two years, and well, Chris, uh, Terry doesn't call me at 3 a.m. Once in a while, he calls at 11 o'clock at night <laughs> and say, hey, Kent, guess where I'm going this weekend? Or, hey, I got some ideas. And, you know, would you come and speak? And it's been a great relationship. And keep calling at 11. My daughters are up till midnight, so it's okay. Uh, but, you know, it's having a passion, having a passion for something. And me tonight, seeing the passion that you all have coming out to this event, and that I see Lydia and Chris and the passion that they have. You know, my passion as a kid was baseball. I had that dream, you know, and wanted to be a pro baseball player. Man, I wanted to be a pro baseball player. That was my whole life. Well, I found out early on I wasn't going to be a pro baseball player. You know, but following that love of baseball afforded me the opportunity to receive a college education. I talk a lot about mentors, finding mentors in your life, getting people that you can hang around that are mentors. I have a mentor sitting in this room right night, tonight, my college baseball coach at Luther College, Paul Solberg. And it gives me goosebumps when I walked in and saw Coach Solberg as I came in. He's a, still a mentor to me, and I fall back on a lot of the things that he told me as a college kid. You know, I was a kid that was ineligible to play baseball one year. He didn't have to take me back to play on that team. He took me back. He believed in me. Now, I didn't like the warm Pepsis that he bought to practice. You know, we had to drink warm pop. But, but it was a mentor. Chris, to this day, is a mentor for me. You know, I look at what he's doing, and I think back when I was 21 years old. What were the decisions I was making? You know, I see and feed off the energy and the power of what he's doing, what Lydia's doing, and to think on days that I struggle that I can't do the same, yes, I can. Yes, we can. We can do anything that we want to do and make it possible. A neat story about the filming. Sean Asson is just a great guy. You know, a lot of people ask me, hey, what's it like to have uh, Sam Gamgee play you in a movie? Well, I said, you know, I really didn't watch the Lord of the Ring trilogies, but for me, it was, I get to have Rudy play me in a movie. <laughs> That's what I liked. Now, my daughters, they think it's cool that uh, Mikey from the Goonies played their hand. That's, that's their, their favorite thing. 
But you know, one of the neat things is when David Mickey Evans was a director of my movie, and David Mickey Evans, you don't know him by name, but he was the writer and director of the movie Sandlot. Many of you have all probably seen the movie Sandlot. When David came to Iowa, he said, Kent, my only goal in this movie is one thing. He said, I want you and Coach Vanskoy to like the movie. I thought, wow, that's pretty impressive. Well, he got done. We fi finished filming on July 3rd of 2006. He goes back to Hollywood to start cutting the movie together and editing. He calls me in October and he said, Kent, I've got it done. I want you and G Coach Vanskoy and I want your wife's to come out to Hollywood and see the movie with me. I said, can't you just send me a DVD? Do I have to go all the way out to Hollywood? <laughs> but we, we went out. I booked all the flights for Coach Vanskoy and his wife, me, and my wife, Lori, and we go to Chicago, from Cedar Rapids Airport to Chicago, get into Chicago, and all of a sudden something happens. There's all these Notre Dame fans, people with Notre Dame shirts and hats on, and me, not knowing a stranger, I went up and said, hey, what, what are you guys doing? And they said, it's the big USC Notre Dame football weekend. Well, that game is tonight. So we ride the plane, we get out to Hollywood. Well, Sean Aston had heard that I was coming, and so he had sent me a, a text saying, hey, when you get to Hollywood, give me a call, we'll go out to eat. So, okay. We get off the plane in LAX, we're walking through the terminal, my cell phone goes off. And I said, look at it, it was Sean Aston. And I'm thinking, hello? He goes, Kent, what's the deal? Why haven't you called yet? Why aren't you here? Let's go out to eat. Why, didn't, why haven't you called me? I said, Sean, we just got off the plane. You know, give me two hours. We'll get and check in the hotel. I'll call you. Well, we start walking to the escalator, down the escalator, to pick up our luggage. And as I look down, there's Sean Asson at the bottom of the escalator <laughs> waiting for us. All of a sudden, this guy behind me goes, oh, my God, it's a sign. Rudy's here. We're going to win. <laughs> In unison, they all started chanting, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. So sometime, I want to walk in a room, or maybe Sean Asson walks in a room, I wonder if they'd ever shout, chant Kent. <laughs> you know, Sean is a powerful person, you know, in doing good things himself. But one of the neat stories is we had Sean Asson at our house uh, during the filming of the movie. And Sean... My wife worked for the movie company, and she told me on her first day of work, and she says, Kent, you gotta hurry up and get home. You gotta get home from work. The first job they gave me is they told me to go shopping, and they gave me the company credit card. <laughs> that was a mistake, giving my wife the company credit card. So I got home from school that day, and I took my daughters out to eat for supper, and, and we went, got home, I kissed them goodnight, read them books, put them to bed, and I come out in my living room, and there's all these bags sitting in the living room. And I thought, Lori, what are all these bags? She goes, Kent, it's really cool. These bags are gift bags for the Hollywood actors. When they arrive on set, they get a gift bag. So I started going through the gift bags, and they had, you know, she had like Big League bubble gum, uh, Field of Dreams trinkets, and neat things like that. And all of a sudden, I keep walking, and there's one bag that's huge. It's like this big, 10 times bigger than the rest of them. I said, Lori, What's the deal with this bag? Why is it so much bigger? She goes, well, if Sean Aston's going to play my husband, he gets the best gift bag. <laughs> so I go through his, book, his gift bag, and he, she had a book. It was called Three Nights in August, a book about Tony La Russa, who was the manager of the Cardinals, my favorite team. And she also had a little gift card, homemade gift card. It said, to the Aston family, brunch at the Stockhouse and an afternoon of swimming at the Bowman Woods Pool. I said, Lori, no way. We're, th this is going to be cool to have the Astons at our house for brunch. We're not going to the Bowman pool. I said, being a principal, I was a kindergarten through eighth grade principal, I said, there's going to be hundreds of little kids there, and they're going to all want Sean's autograph. She blows me off, whatever. Very first day that we have off of filming, the Aston family are at our house for brunch. We get done eating, and all of a sudden I hear my wife holler out, hey, everybody ready to go swimming? And my stomach just started churning. No, Lori, quiet. All of a sudden, Sean Aston goes, come on, Aston girls, we're going swimming. I went up to Sean. I said, Sean, seriously, man, we do not have to go to the pool. I said, there's going to be 100 little kids. They're going to want your autograph. They're going to bug you. You don't need that. He looks at me. He says, Ken, it happens to me all the time. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. I can handle it. 
So we go to the pool, we're driving up, we're walking up to the swimming pool, and it starts to happen. Little kid, probably eight or nine years old, he just starts to point. He's with his mom. He goes, oh, Mom, Mom, look! It's Mr. Stock, my principal! <laughs> True story. <laughs> Sean Aston grabs me by the shoulders and he said, I thought I was the star. <laughs> but you know what? That day, to that kid, it wasn't Sean Aston, it wasn't Mikey from the Goonies, it wasn't Sam Gamgee that was his star. It was his middle school, kindergarten through eighth grade principal that was his star. Sean told me something that day. He said, Kent, and kind of prophetic, he said, Kent, this movie, whether it goes big or not, is going to afford you the opportunity to speak at a lot of schools and talk to a lot of kids. He said, I want you to tell them, don't put athletes and actors on a pedestal. They may let you down. He said, Kent, it's people like you. It's people like you. It's like you. It's like you. It's like Lydia. And it's like Chris that are our stars. Those are the people I wanted you to look up to. One of the things that during the movie, not to, to make it sad, but there was a helicopter accident in my movie. And we did a great job of hiring like high school interns to help out. And we had hired a, a girl that was a junior in high school that walked around, hung around the set every day, got to the point where she drove the props guy crazy because he would pull her over and she'd follow him around. You know, the person that in the, to, if this was a movie scene, they set the beer bottle there, the, you know, they had everything set up. Well, he needed help. It was a low budget movie, he needed help. And he went to the producers and said, would you hire this young lady? Junior in high school. They said yes. Well, the day that we had our helicopter accident, she was running props back and forth from the set to where the helicopter accident occurred. And Tony Wilson, my best friend, the producer of the movie, was injured in that accident. He was hauled out to the University of Iowa hospitals, told he may not live through the weekend. He did. They said, you may not be able to ever walk again. He did. They said, for sure, you will never run again. He ran a 5K race in Des Moines three years ago. Yes, I can. Yes, we can. You know, what was neat is that after the movie was done filming, I never saw it the young junior in high school for the longest time. And I sat in my office at school as the principal and often wondered, my mind would just float, wondering, whatever happened to her? I feel so bad that she had to be the first one on that and witness all that. And I felt like, man, I should be that mentor and really help her out and reach out. And I never did. We were, I was busy. But we got to where the film was ready to be shown at a cast and crew screening. And everybody in the cast and crew were invited to go to Hollywood. And I went out for the week with Coach Vanskoy. We're sitting in the lobby before we were having the cast and crew film. And in walks this young girl with her dad. And I went up to her and I said, how are you doing? I've been thinking a lot about you. And she goes, you know what, Kent? I've been thinking a lot about you. And she gave me a gift. She gave me a gift and it was a shield with a cross on it. And on the back of it, it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I was worrying about her, thinking I needed to be up and be her mentor. Mentorship has no age. It's ignorance of age. It's people like a young, lot younger than me that has been a mentor and made a huge impact on my life. I buy these by the box, and I... Find the right person to know who to give these to. And Chris, I'm going to give you this, and it's not necessarily for you, but you will know the day that this somebody else needs that shield, and it's a shield to give to them, to help support them. Chris, thanks for being a mentor to me. Uh, thank you for the relationship that we have. Thank you, everybody here, for what you're doing. The tagline of my movie, when Sean Aston was in that locker room and he's talking to the team and he said, today, you're playing for everyone who's ever worn a Norway jersey and they're with you today. So ask yourself one question, how do you want to be remembered? I challenge each and every one of you on a daily basis, every person you meet, every interaction you have, to think about how do you want to be remembered?
Thank you, and God bless.